Joining us now, Republican Congressman David Valadeo of California. He has voted for Kevin McCarthy in each of the six votes held so far, and he said he will vote for McCarthy for as long as it takes. Congressman, thanks for joining us this morning. Um, help us understand where this is headed from here. It seems to be the same story with all six votes. With those of you who have pledged your allegiance to Kevin McCarthy voting for him, the 19 or 20 who say they won't, staying and holding their ground, what gives here? How does this change? Well, I mean, I think we just have to keep working. Uh, obviously, uh, they're continuing the late night conversations, early morning conversations. Um, a lot of concessions have been made. Uh, the process started months ago, uh, and I'm sure it can still continue for a little bit longer, but uh, it, it's going to be a fight. You know some of these people in that group of 20, or they're colleagues of yours. Have you talked to them privately or just your public observation? What exactly are they up to here? What do they really want out of this process? Well, and that's the problem, and, and I know it's been reported before, but it's important to remember uh, that we've gone through this process. We went through the Rules Committee debate where it's a closed-door meeting with just Republicans. We debate, and we pass a rules package. That rules package was pretty much unanimous. I don't remember there being a single no vote at the end of it. And then they start to change the uh, trying to change the rules again. There's some concessions that can be made. Uh, but then when we actually had a closed-door meeting again, the very straightforward question of what do you want uh, was asked, and, and it was asked from everyone in the room, I mean, to the point where it was shouts, and there was no direct answer, and I still continue to hear members, uh, random members, talking to these uh, this small, small group of members and asking them, what do you want, and there's still no clear answer. And as you say, Kevin McCarthy has conceded so much already to all of them, including overnight, according to our reporting at NBC News, a single member can raise his or her hand and vote to effectively a vote of no confidence against the speaker and move him out of power. So is there any negotiating left to be done here with this group? Well, the reality is, is the motion to vacate is just something that brings to the floor a motion that uh, requires another vote for speaker. Uh, it doesn't allow that one person to actually remove the speaker, but it does right. create chaos and it does disrupt the process of legislating. And it is a weapon that uh, would be used irresponsibly if it was allowed to happen. I don't know if that's done. And ultimately, what happens after the speaker vote is we have to vote on a rules package. And if the majority of us disagree with this, we can, again, vote down the rules. So, Congressman, uh, good morning. Uh, my question to you is, uh, the, this small group, outnumbered by the rest of you, clearly wielding a lot of power right now, though, holding up the entire process. How concerned are you that even if some deal is struck that Mc Kevin McCarthy becomes speaker, but this group is going to still feel emboldened and be able to uh, hijack the process legislatively countless times down the road, including for that, the idea of a call for a new speaker vote? Well, obviously, we're really concerned. We're really concerned with what's going on right now. I mean, the, the administration is continuing to act without any oversight. We're, uh, as member of Congress, we're not sworn in, so we have no committee, so we can't start working on the things we committed to working on as uh, members of Congress once elected uh, and once being in the majority. And even our offices being able to reach out to the different uh, federal agencies to try to assist our constituents is being hampered at this moment. So it's a big concern that this very small group of members is disrupting the business of the people, and it's disrupting the process that we need to uh, that we need to get started, which is governing. Uh, if it's passing uh, legislation to help with our border situation, if it's providing oversight over Afghanistan, if it's providing oversight over things that are important to people like me, uh, Department of Interior, when it comes to water in the Central Valley, I mean, there's a lot of things that need to be done, uh, but we can't do that until these folks come online and start to figure out that they're, again, in the small minority. I mean, there's 200 of us that are together on this, over 200, supporting Kevin McCarthy. They've had the opportunity to make their debate. They've lost those debates, or not lost, they've got a lot of their compromises. And now we have the opportunity to move forward and actually govern as a majority, but they're holding up the whole process. Well, and, and Congressman, if you look at even what happened last night, they just keep moving the goalposts. They constantly keep moving the goalposts. And like you said, it's hard to nail them down. So the question is, as they keep moving the goalposts, um, I guess for the express purpose of just uh, stopping Kevin McCarthy, despite what the overwhelming majority of Republicans in the conference want, Will you stand by Kevin McCarthy through the 7th, 8th, 10th, 20th ballot? Oh, absolutely. I've publicly committed to being there as long as I need to be there to continue to stand with McCarthy. And, and there's a lot more of us who uh, committed to standing with them through the long haul. Uh, if it's hundreds of ballots, we'll be there. Um, but ultimately, we, we need them to come on board if they actually want to do anything to uh, help their own constituents at home and hope, uh, help their home areas. Uh, I mean, we get elected to Congress to serve the people, and this isn't serving the people, that's for sure. Republican Congressman David Valadeo of California. Thank you very much for being on this morning.